Hey everybody, welcome to Sam Can Do. I am a mom, I'm a rebel creative, and I love Glowforge. Uh, today I'm really excited to share a new series with you. Uh, it's gonna be a four part series, at least I have four parts planned now, called How to Turn Your Glowforge Into Money. I get this question all the time from people who've seen my videos. Um, you know, they kind of come around and say, well, hey, like if I get a Glowforge, am I gonna be able to turn it into money? How long did it take you to get your money back? You know, what can I do? And it's really a difficult question to answer. So instead of telling you, yes, you will make money off of this or no, you won't, I thought I'd give you some hints or some tips to help you starting your Glowforge business. Now, even if you follow these tips, I can't promise you that money's gonna come. Um, I, I don't know, like there's lots of nuance, there's lots of things, and I also am like very anti like hustle culture because a lot of us have extenuating circumstances and we can't start, you know, there's just a lot of things. And so I'm just sharing this so that you can have the best possible information that I have access to. And from my experience, when I used to run a social enterprise at my old job, um, you know, I did wholesaling and merchandising and creating a brand. I also do marketing, type like social media things for a living, um, consulting other people, have lots of experience in that. Um, and I am just a child of the internet. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna decide what you wanna make. Now you can make all kinds of different things. You can make a ton of things, but I feel like if you kind of niche into something specific, um, there, you know, that could help you really focus on something and grow a brand. Now, I say, I sound like I'm jumping around because there's a lot of different ways you can go over this. So I'm gonna go over some examples of types of ways that you can make things with Glowforge that you can make money off of. And then you're gonna wanna choose one or two of those categories. Some people might do all, but I'm just, it's just an idea. I would say choose something the reason I would say choose a single category is because then you can really dive into that one type of market, that one type of marketing, the one type of, you know, whatever, you, wherever you're going to be selling, you're kind of known for th those items. Okay, so here's some examples. The first thing you could do is you could actually do a custom goods service. So you could have a selection of items such as like signs, um, anything that's engravable and sell, don't sell the item already like engraved, say I can customize this for you. Just some examples of ways that you can do that is for families. You could have a family sign, this is one that's very popular, where you, you can put in people's last name, family name, you know, established here, here, and here, or kids' names, anything that has to do with families. I feel like that's a really, really big market of people who are always looking for things for their kids, for their rooms, for their houses. Um, very, very cute, very, very niche. You have to kind of figure out what your vibe would be, but I see that on Etsy, I see that online all the time. You could do it for businesses, special signs for their uh, offices, um, specific um, like name plates. I mean, anything that a business or specific industry um, would need, you could have items for that. Like I've seen so many times businesses have special engraved acrylic signs outside their doors, um, special signs outside their building. I mean, I I'm not trying to go into the super detail because you you're smart. You know what I'm talking about. Um, events, weddings, uh, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, special events. They're always gonna need like placeholders, cake toppers, um, items that you can place in boutonnieres. I actually did a custom like um, Jedi, wooden thing that stuck into the boutonnieres for somebody's wedding. And I partnered with a wedding organizer in order to do some custom goods like that. So you could actually look for different types of event venues, event planners, um, wedding people, and partner with them saying, hey, these are the types of goods I can make. And now for any of these things, like you can look up wedding laser cut blank on Pinterest. There's all kinds of ways that you can find inspiration, but weddings, events, things like that would be a really good niche. Another thing is um, like an industry specific niche need. So if you find like cycling, cycling is a very specific industry or lifestyle industry where people are always looking to get more gear, get more things. So you could design something specifically for like cyclers, something to clip on people's bikes, something that helps them with, you know, D&D &D would be another industry specific. You could find items like dice. I know a lot of people make those dice towers. Um, you know, there's lots of ways that you could find like a specific industry, like people who make planners, whatever that little like niche sub community or niche industry, such as like people who use crickets or people, I'm having trouble thinking of like specific or like the medical industry, um, you know, things that people would wear on lanyards or even like 
cute little pins that say things for nurses or medical professionals. Um, so industry specific or merch, you could market yourself to different influencers, musicians, artists, and say, hey, I would love to do a merch line for you. I could make keychains with your logo. I could make this with your logo. So those are all custom goods. So I'm gonna go over that again. You have families like home signs, front yard signs, kids bedroom door signs, baby showers, things like that businesses. So you could do things for office parks or you could approach specific businesses um, to say, hey, do you need any of these custom things made and great for your business? If I find examples, I'll put them up. Um, events like weddings, um, industry specific like cyclers, uh, medical industry or whatever XYZ industry that you can think of. Um, merch for influencers. And so those are some different ideas of custom goods. So that's not you starting your own brand of like, these are the things I make and they're cute and I make them. It's like, hey, these are all customizable pieces that I can make specifically for you because I have a Glowforge. Okay, are we all good? The second type of thing you could make um, to make money is handmade goods. You could decide to make your own brand of anything, puzzles, earrings, key tags, boxes, whatever you do. If you go onto the Glowforge Instagram, you will see a ton of people that they've tagged that have created personal brands that are completely just handmade items, whether it's an artistic item or it's a useful item, it doesn't matter. It's just a finished product that they can make. And we're gonna talk a lot about how to deal with that type of uh, money-making opportunity um, and where to sell those in a later video. But that's, you know, something that a lot of people do. Now, the third thing is you could not even make an item and sell the item. You could just make content. And that has been something that I have focused on in the past. You could just make content about Glowforge and that can turn into cash by a lot of different ways. You could have people, you could monetize your videos because you're making tutorials, you're entertaining people, you're giving people information. Um, you can make, you, um, you can do referrals, a, a Glowforge has a great referral program. You can refer people to Glowforge or any of the other items um, that like I'll refer you guys to some things and that's a way to create income, opportunity, and even just a lot of fun. I enjoy creating content. Um, so those are three different ways that you can make money, three different types of things. There's a lot of other ways. These are just ideas. So you could do a custom goods service, you could do handmade items, or you could even make content. So these are three different ways that I see are really, really kind of no brainers to jump into making money. Now, how do you decide what do you wanna do? Well, first of all, we need to ask ourselves some questions. What's accessible to your skills? If you feel very confident about designing, designing really cool things, designing really interesting things, you're flexible, you're quick to make new designs, you're quick to alt alternate things, you're really good at troubleshooting, you're gonna have opportunity to make more complex things, more different items. Now, if you know that you struggle with the designing part or you're not very tech savvy and you're really only able to make prefab Glowforge items, just keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with starting an online store or an online Etsy store where you're literally making the things that Glowforge sells in their catalog. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone is so convinced that they have to be like hyper original. So sorry if you can hear my heater just turn on, it'll eventually turn off and I'm just gonna keep going. Um, a lot of people feel like they have to be so, so, so original and I'm gonna tell you that ethical is more important than original. You make sure that you're not stealing anybody's designs, you're not stealing someone's idea because, you know, I, I um, I see a lot of people, there's a lot of trends that they were gonna see over and over and over again. You know, it's okay to say like, okay, this person is doing novelty like nameplates. That's something we've seen over and over again, it's something that I sell. But like, don't just steal the exact saying that someone put on theirs. Try to remix an idea, try to be original. Um, we don't wanna be rude to each other. So I always, you know, ethical over original. So you can't always be original, but you can make sure that you're staying ethical in that. And I'll give you some tips on how to do that even more a little bit later. Okay, so we said, what's accessible to your skills? What can you actually do? And then also, what is motivating to your interests? So like, if you don't care about cycling, maybe don't start a cycling brand of handmade goods. Maybe find the things that you enjoy and see if there's something that you can make within that sub community or that sub niche. Now, always we're gonna say, okay, what our interests are, which can be multiple, right? And and then what people care about, what there's a market for. And you can kind of always find that intersection. Um, where's the intersection between that? And you might have to start and try a little bit um, in order to find that. That's kind of true in anything online. I mean, you're gonna test things out. You're gonna find that some people like some of your stuff, some people don't like some of your stuff. And, and as you see how people respond and as your sales grow, you can usually find those trends. 
So I hope that gives you some inspiration about like where to start with what you're gonna make and how you're gonna make it. Now, a couple honorable mention things I wanna throw in at the end is be a student. Do not give up on learning. If you want to take, if you're jumping into a new business, you're starting a business, you're starting a side hustle, whatever you wanna call it, don't expect that you have all the skills that you need to do something you've never done before. There are so many resources online. There's my channel, which I hope to be helpful with. There's also things like skills Share. I love Skillshare. I have a referral code down below where I learn all the time. I learned how to use Illustrator on Skillshare. I learned how to use Premiere Pro, which I'm editing this on Skillshare. I learned how to use my camera on Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome thing if you're trying to start a business. You can learn how to edit videos. You can learn how to design files. You can learn how to um, start doing social media. Use the tools that are available to you. And Skillshare has some really affordable prices. They do lots of great promotions, but it is one of the most valuable things you can do is go and learn. The next thing I'm gonna share with you is Creative Market. Creative Market is a place where you can literally buy designs from other designers. It's all in one beautiful place. They give away six free designs every single Monday when you sign up for their newsletter, which I absolutely love. But a lot of us say, well, I'm not that creative or I'm not this, or I don't know how to make the, the basic elements. Don't, don't worry about it. Like those things are out there. And if you can be creative and put them together, Creative Market is an amazing, amazing tool to get started when, with whatever you're gonna make with your Glowforge. So I hope that's really, really helpful. Everything that I you know, mentioned as far as resources will be listed down below. If you haven't already got a Glowforge, you can get one with my code, of course, say $500 or less, depending on what model you get. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll come back. <laughs> I hope that you'll come back for class two, where we're gonna talk about where to sell whatever you're gonna make. Um, and yeah, if there's other ways that you can think of that I missed, go type down below. If you have other questions, type down below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.